opening in 28th of January 2010. And this account started in February 2010. So yeah, this account started before my whole YouTube stuff. So that is, I was right. But yeah, I had a, I had, sorry, I had a stream, I had a Steam account before... Um... Uh, before obviously that, which I, uh, I created when I was playing, when I first got, uh, Empire, uh, sorry, uh, Ghost was it Empire Street. or was it Napoleon? Was it either Empire or Napoleon? I don't actually remember. I'm pretty sure it was M uh, Napoleon, but it could have been M uh, Empire. Either way, it was one of the two total wars that were linked. No, it was Empire. It was, it was, sorry, no, it was, it was Napoleon. It was Napoleon. I remember because I played the, uh, I... Yeah, because I remember the actual name of the units. Then when I got Empire, I was like, why the fuck is this just called Line Infantry? Why isn't this like a special name or anything? Yeah, so um, I had a Steam account before. I had EU3 on it, uh, which I'd got into because of a YouTuber who um, went under the name of Joseph Stalin. I can't remember what he is. Uh, I think it's the Stalin here now. Very Stalin heavy channel. No clue why. Um, I also started watching Shenra around that time as well. I think, did I watch... I don't think I... Shenra didn't get me into uh, Europa, but he, he was definitely one of my biggest influences in terms of wanting to play it a lot more. Uh, I know that the demo... I got into the demo from Keep the left. channel I mentioned previously, the Stalinator. He got me into the demo of EU4. Um, purely because I found out... I found the game through him because I've been watching his other content. I don't even remember what his other, co other content I was watching of his is. Because uh, I was watching him on his older channel, which, as I said, is obviously the Joseph Stalin one. Again, still don't know why he named his channel after a, you know, a dictator, but, you know, I couldn't really give a shit these days. But YouTube was an edgier time back then. YouTube was so edgy comparatively to then. Uh, to now, sorry. Uh, like, now, YouTube these days is so fucking tame. Apart from, like, you know, some of the stupid stunts people do. But, like, channel names were generally, generally way more edgier back then. Whereas, these days, um, channel names are a lot more built around you know, building up like an actual uh, brand. Whereas back then they were just names. They, they were just what you were known as on the internet. Um, but yeah, I, I still don't know what happened to my original Steam account. It's, I've never been able to figure out what happened to it. Like Keep I know left, it didn't get stolen. Then turn left. Cause I know that much. Cause I never gave the details to anyone. Like I know for a fact that it's, it wasn't stolen. Turn left. But I just don't remember the login at all. I don't even remember what email address I use. Like, that's the worst thing is like it's like here we are i was kind quite young time. back then like when i got when napoleon came out is when i got it so it's like it's obviously years ago we're talking now but it's just one of those things where i just don't know you know I do apologize, I'm suddenly starting to concentrate. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where I, I know I've had a Steam account before, I just cannot remember the details, but... Yeah, um... Why the fuck did I get on this topic again? I don't even remember how I got on this fucking topic. That's what happens when you tangent so much, you just forget what the fuck you're on about. Oh, European names, yes! It's like all the games European-based, I, uh, yeah, I've been playing obviously a lot of them. Like Age of Empires was very heavily European as well. Sorry about the very big tangent there that then became like a gigantic tangent. Alright, so where are the jobs here? Because I'm pretty sure they I can get them from here. Uh, they're in all in Popseed. Uh, Plymouth. That's a shit job. That's actually not bad. I would never do that one. 55 a quid a mile. I'm going to do Plymouth. Because Plymouth can take me down to a uh, two thing. Do you have any jobs for me? Fuck, you're not Pop Seed. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to Pop Seed. Um, just take Cargo Market. We want... We want the Plymouth job, please. Does Plymouth also have jobs for us? It does, so we, we may come back north. I don't know. Uh, let's go to Plymouth. Takes four hours to get to Plymouth. Oh, we're going to be pushing it. But let's see. If we can do this nice and quickly, we should be able to get there just before we have to rest. But... um. Yeah, so I do apologize, like, like I was saying, not, not apologize, I do, uh, like I was saying, I could probably navigate Europe in this without a sat nav and dug. Would Turn I want left. to? Probably not. I mean, it's not really, I don't think no sat nav is really that fun for me. Because, I don't know, I mean, like, 
I just, I just don't think like when I, even when I walk places, especially like when I used to, when I went to Leeds with my best friend last year, at some point, I um like between when her and I were trying to get to from the escape room to the Leeds right. Armory, and then we um right. we just used Google Maps and we found the quickest route and walked there, because we didn't know the route. Um, there, there, right. there were probably signs, but like. Why use signs when there's you have a fucking Google you have a map in your pocket for Google and you can tell you, you know, where to go for your earbuds and like I feel like with so much modern technology, we like like especially people in my generation are probably a lot less uh, able to just kind of remember where to go. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking for everyone and as I don't drive, I don't, you know, remember take the second like exit. I don't genuinely remember um where to go and you know i, I don't genuinely Exit now. need to know i need to remember mo ro uh, road routes and whatnot but as soon as i feel like i start driving because i want to drive a Keep motorbike left. i'll probably they learn it left. it's just at the moment i don't know them and i don't need to so it's one of those things you know turn left but yeah don't expect me to do no sound of anytime soon uh just not for me how much money we got? We got 68 grand. We could pay off our 40 yard grand because this, the interest of this one's 20%. Let's just get rid of you. We can now borrow 58 grand again. Beautiful. We're not going to, but we could. Um. But yeah. One thing that's really, I, I just, just with this like thing, one thing that's been Keep nice right. to think about is kind of like my Keep inspiration right. for doing YouTube as well, like. Back when I started, like like I said, I started in 2010. Right. Apparently, I thought it was 20. I thought it was way later than that. Finally, like in 13 here. years doing this shit. Holy shit, that's not what I. I don't remember doing it this long. I mean, don't get me wrong, that was my test video, and I do remember recording my test video with my cousin sat in the room, because uh, my cousin and I were really close back then. We still are pretty close. We just, you know, we both live diff do different things, and I'm kind of busy with my life, and you know, he's busy with doing his shit, and like I just don't see him as much as I used to, and. uh you know, it's one of those, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Still, one, still, like, still, still like a brother to me. So, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's weird to think that, like, I, like I said, I can still remember doing. I can still remember just recording them with my. Uh, I'm jackknifing the living fuck out of this. Lovely. That's not what I was trying to do. Um, but yeah, I can still remember um, like record, like he was sat there playing like so. I sat. I had uh, when I first started. I was on my. I was using a laptop, like a very shit laptop too. I, we're talking, we're talking the power. Like I, I could barely play the games without lag, without recording. Add fraps into the mix, which was like the. Uh, the actually, did I start? No, I started with fraps, and then I went to Bandicam. But like, start. Think about fraps, which is pretty soft. Pretty was one of the heavier, like you know, recording softwares in terms of like memory it took up to record, um, and. Uh, what else is there like like how much memory you would uh it would take up to make the files like it was like let's do like, these, these like you'd want to render these files down you know you'd probably want to record like a session then just kind of edit it to make sure all of the uh you know make sure the fucking file size was less shit which i used um youtube i used um windows movie maker for and if it wasn't for the air of carthage i would not have known how to make 1080p videos which is another thing i still remember very very well um, I mean, they probably don't remember me, but uh, left. I remember very fondly uh, my, some right. of my early videos. Because right. back then, uh, Air of Carthage did a thing where it's like, you know, if you want my help, you're new to YouTube, you know, turn whatnot, right. just uh, send me a link and uh, he'll, uh, you know, help. And uh, I asked him and he uh, looked at my videos and uh, told me how to improve them and whatnot and asked me uh, what I was using. And it was really cool. It was really cool. And uh, he recommended, I think, I think I got the, uh, I think I got my mic that I'm still using to this day because of a recommendation from him as well. Because I'm pretty sure it was him who recommended the uh, uh, the Blue Yeti. I cannot remember, Keep honestly, left, though. But, um, left. yeah, but back then, like, I can just remember, like, all my inspirations, like, turn left. for Total War, it was definitely Air of Carthage. Air of Carthage was my big one. I used to watch Pixelated Apollo. I think that's what his name, YouTube name was. Um, I used to watch, obviously, the Stalinator. I used to watch him quite a bit. I'm pretty sure he did a bit of Total War content. What else did I fucking watch? It's been so long. Like, I do go back, try to go back and watch some old YouTube Let's Plays. Less for nostalgia reason and more just to, you know, kind of watch them. Because they, I, I remember them being good. 
Do I try to take the nostalgia factor out of it and see if they're still good? And a lot of them still hold up. Like a lot of 1F Jeff or Jeff Majors Let's Plays. Absolutely pinnacle. You know, amazing to view. Um, when did I put my fucking diff lock on? I don't even remember pressing V. But, um... Yeah, uh, what else? What else did I fucking watch? I watched Grim, if I still watch Grim. I still watch Mysterious JG. They were later, though. Like, they came up... I think they came after I started doing YouTube. I can't remember. Uh, like, I know I watched Jeff Major pretty early into recording, because he got me into the guild. By the way, fucking great game, the guild. If anybody wants, like, a renaissance business manager, get the guild. Get the guild or get the guild renaissance. I mean, the guild 2, sorry. The guild 2 and the guild Ren 2 renaissance. Absolutely fucking amazing games. The Guild 3 is meant to be decent now, but I honestly... I bought it when it first came out in terms of, like, early access, and I enjoyed Keep it. Left, it's just... Then turn left. I don't know. I'm just not... I, it's just... It's not the original. That's not Toot. It's not the Guild 2, so... Turn left. I feel like the Guild 2 has uh, definitely got that nostalgia factor for me, which makes it more fun to play, but I'm probably going to revisit the Guild, because I do want to try it again. Um... But back onto the topic I was uh, on about. Uh, so yeah, Jeff got me into world stuff. Grimmith got me into liberal crimes, got along with 1F Jeff. Mysterious JG. So Mysterious JG is a big one. And um, for those of you who... I, I know, I apologize this is like not very truck related, but it is very much related to me as a, you know, streamer and YouTuber. And you know, it, it, this is going to help you get, into, get to know who I am as a person. Uh, Mysterious JG got me into my fascination of uh, the free periods, uh, the, free, uh, the free kingdoms period of China. Before um, Mysterious JG, I, there was no period in China to me that I really knew about or was interested in. Now, that's not a bad thing, mind you. Um, you know, I don't have to be, you don't have to be interested in another culture or a, another place's um, history. Where one, no matter what people tell you, you don't, there's, it's not a requirement to be interested in someone else's culture. Don't get me wrong, it's nice if you are, but you know, it's not necessary. Um, but because of his videos on Romance of the Three Kingdoms 11, wait, was it? Oh, no, fuck, it wasn't. It was um, Grimith. It was Grimith's ROTK4. I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it was back then. So when I was watching ROTK4, I just saw a map of China, and I was like, okay. Then it was Mysterious JG who got me into the history, and then I got the novels because I watched his thing, which I do not remember where I put them. My grandma bought me the novel. So my, oh, okay, this is a funny story. So my grandma for Christmas uh, and my birthday, because they're quite close, she normally buys me... Or she would normally buy me a video game at Christmas and then something else for my birthday. This is when I was obviously younger. We're talking quite a few years now. Um, so when I was... Uh, I can't remember how old it was. Um, she was buying me the Naruto uh, book. She was buying like two or three at a time. And she would buy them every birth on my, on my birthday every year for me. Um, or if I was lucky, she'd buy me one throughout the year. If you know, if, if she was feeling nice. Don't get me wrong. She bought... I was... I am still pretty spoiled by my grandma and I, I don't try I try not to take advantage of the fact that my grandma loves me to bits and uh, you know is amazing um, but like I was a teenager when this was happening don't worry as well so this is why I know I was a bit spoiled um, but one year she went okay Joe what do you want for your Chris what do you want for your birthday this year and I was like uh, well Christmas I want uh, you know I think it was the was I into Assassin's Creed yet because she's bought me every assassin near enough every Assassin's Creed she bought me Assassin's Creed 3 for sorry Brotherhood Brotherhood all the way up to... What's the last Assassin's Creed she bought me? I think it was Origin, the last one she bought me. And then after that, I bought myself, because I had to decide I'm in a job. She always used to buy them for Christmas, then she started buying myself. Either way, my, uh, you know, slightly, uh, you know, spoiled self, ignoring that. One uh, birthday, she asked me what I wanted. Is this, did I still want the Naruto books? And I said, well, yeah, but could I have something different this year? I was like, why? I was like, well, you know... I do want the Naruto books, but I would like this really cool novel. So my grandma being, you know, my granddad both being big avid readers, my grandma was like, okay, what novel is it, Joe? And I was like, well, so because she didn't have a clue what I fucking meant, and I always used to go down south to visit my grandparents for my birthday and Christmas, as I spent all year with my mum, uh, because my, uh, this was after my, unfortunately, my dad had died, and, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to spend Christmas and birthday with my, uh, my, da uh, my, my grandma and my my mum didn't mind, of course. You know, she, she didn't mind. Uh, my siblings, I don't really know if they minded. I don't, I don't think my little sister did mind too much. But I don't know. I, I, I don't really know. These days, I always have Christmas with my mum. So because I haven't, I, because I work now, it's hard to go down south at Christmas. Uh, it's, it's near impossible, actually, for me because I work in retail. And in retail, 
you can't go down south for Christmas. You, you can't have just two weeks out of the busiest part of the year. Um, even being ill for a week gets you kind of shit from your uh, colleagues, which is just lovely. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so I, I went to the bookshop um, with my grandma on the on my birthday, and uh, so we were looking for the books because this bookshop had an had manga, had I think it had manhwa as well. But I, back then, I just thought it was manga because it said Korean manga, which is manhwa. Um, but yeah, I uh, I found the manga section. I looked at the three narrators, and then I was like, I went up to the lady and asked her if she had this book. My grandma obviously was just looking for that, so I looked. I asked the lady, she said, "Yeah." So I said, "Grandma, grandma." I went over to this uh, historical fucking novel section, and I was just like, "What are you looking for, Joe?" And I was like, "I was like the romance of the three kingdoms." She was like, "What the fuck is that?" You know, because she was. She, 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 I told her before, but she just not remembered. And so, I found the first part of the novel it was a. I'll be honest, it was a pretty fucking pricey book as well. They are they, they, those novels expensive. Go straight. And we're talking like 30, 40 quid, if I remember if I'm remembering right. Now again, this has happened over ten years ago. Or oh, nearly fifth probably more than fifteen years ago. And um she, she, I got it and you know, I was very grateful and I read it I think I read the first novel two or three times in the uh, year before I got the next one because you know, I was still at school, so I was still I, I kind of like and I, was, I I used to play a lot of video uh, I say I used to play a lot of video games. I used to play a lot of video games with my friends. Um, so, and I used to go with my friends and we'd, we'd piss about playing video games. So my time spent between, you know, to reading was pretty much whenever I was alone, uh, which was, you know, I'd, I'd read at night or something. But um, she, essentially, when I, uh, essentially she got me all three, I think it was three parts, if I remember correctly. I cannot remember it, but I need to find those somewhere as well. But essentially, yeah, I uh, confused my grandma one year by asking for a, uh, a, a, uh, super adult novel as well because the romance of the three kingdoms while a romanticizing of the period of the three kingdoms it's not exactly very kid friendly um there's definitely a lot of death deceit um i think the only thing it doesn't have is romance technically like actual you know like you know written down characters having sex which is you know big w for joe didn't have to worry about that so you know definitely was gonna definitely was able to get the book um, yeah, so I was uh, honestly, if, if any of you have are avid readers and want to read a really, really, really Keep amazing, right. like, uh, telling straight. of a historical event from a romanticized point of view, um, get Romance of the Free Kingdom. It is an amazing read. It is legitimately such a beautiful story. Um, and it just, it, it's so well told as well. However, if you're more of like a historical nerd and want kind of like the more fiction, the non-fiction version of it, there is the records of the Three Kingdoms, which is a, um, I, 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 I can never Go remember straight. the exact way it's, to, uh, re, uh, the exact way it's explained, but it's essentially the historical account of, um, the, uh, the, the novel. Like it's the act, it's what the, uh, the records of the Three Kingdoms is essentially what the romance of the Three Kingdoms was based on. Um, as the romance of the North Commons, the romance was obviously a romanticizing of the actual period. So obviously the mystic stuff that happens in the novel doesn't happen, didn't obviously happen in real life. Like the Yellow Turban Rebellion, real. Uh, the I think the leader whose name always escapes me, and I always forget he's the leader of the Yellow Turban Rebellion until I look at him, oh yeah, no, that dickhead. Um, I do apologize. I'm very bad with certain, like the Yellow Turban period of Three Kingdoms because it's always the first part I read. And then I get into the chunky Three Kingdoms part where, you know, we've got Sunsa, uh, Sun Quan, uh, Sun Xian, uh, Lu Bei, Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, uh, Cao Cao, uh, Cao Pi, I think his son is, um, Zuke Liang, and, you know, all of the, the really, really important generals of the Three Kingdoms who got their start in the Yellow Turban Rebellion, but, like, have a much, much larger part after He Jin is deposed by um, Dong Zhuo. Um, but yeah, um, quickly, rect rect quickly explaining what I was on about. Um, the uh, leader of the Elder Turban, if I remember correctly, in history, he was accused of sorcery and like accused of having like mystical powers. But I believe Go they straight. were fully romanticized as well. Like they they were they. I think he definitely was said to have them. But looks like I keep doing that one too many. Um, but realistically, he obviously um, wouldn't have had like zero. He would have had like a. I think he had like a 
a claim to sorcery, but it actually was. I don't know if he was really a sorcerer. I don't know how big of a thing the actual novels put on his uh, accusing of sorcery. I know that the novel, the romant romanticization of it, does a big, really big job of like playing off his sorcery and whatnot in the story. Um, but I don't know about the actual records of Three Kingdoms. I have not read the records. Um, I've read an e I've read excerpts, but I've never actually owned or read it myself. So all I know is it is, of course, an amazing telling of the correct story. Uh, though, of course, we can never know what actually happened because I believe the records of the Three Kingdoms, if I remember correctly, was not written until like a few hundred years later. So that was written by someone who was using um, like past tellings of it. So even the records of the Three Kingdoms isn't the most accurate portrayal of it. Um, it's just what we know. Um, but still, it's, if you're interested in reading, I would always, and you love history, I'd recommend both of those books massively. Easily some of the best fiction and non-fiction. Or fiction based on non-fiction, and then the non-fiction based on uh, tellings. It's like Homer and, um, like, you know, the, the um, storytellers of the Greek period. A lot of them, and same with the Roman period as well, a lot of them were not, were not there. They were simply people who wrote about it after the fact and were able to use like excerpts of what they've heard and what they could gather to tell the story and to explain them i think the closest we have like to some of the main storytellers of each period is like ulius kaiser himself detailing what he was doing but even then we have to view that from the lens of obviously he's bastardizing what he's saying because it's you know he's saying this it's not a it's not a fact. It's like, oh, we barely lost any men that day. Where realistically, he maybe lost quite a few men. We was like, eh, I'm probably just going to bastardize this, you know, right in my opinion. That's obviously a lot of things we have to think about from contemporary writers of the each period is everybody has a bias and, you know, viewing, like, even the records of the Three Kingdoms, you know there's a bias to it. Because Cao Cao, especially in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novels, I don't know how much in the records, but specifically the novelization of it, the novelization of the records, Cao Cao is viewed as a villain. Like, he's viewed as a big-ass villain. Like, he's viewed as the bad guy. And don't get me wrong, he does a lot of underhanded things. But then again, right. so does Sun Quan. So does Lu Bei. Though Lu Bei is, I always believe, his... Um, I always view Lu Bei as kind of Go like straight. someone doing bad via someone else, if you know what I mean. Like, he, he's is someone in his kingdom kind of, like, oh. on his lead. But then again, I'm pretty sure also he did a, quite a few fucked up things, but... Either way, South Side was always portrayed as the bad guy, and I think out of all of them, are, in my opinion, like, so this is this is going to sound a bit controversial, and what I know of, and again, using my limited knowledge of the period, again, I'm not claiming to be an expert, nor do I know everything, I simply know what I know. Um, but what I know of the um, period, I think Sao Sao... And I'm going to quickly phrase this well. I, over the years, when I was first introduced this, I'm going to quickly con uh, I'm gonna quickly state this before I uh, you know, finish what I was saying. Over the years, I was introduced through Romance of the Free Kingdoms from the period of, at the position of watching Grimith, uh, like I said, play Arity Gave War as his own custom leader, so I had no real historical basis and understanding of what was going on or who was who and who was important and what the backstory was of all of them. Though Grimith did an amazing job, and when, when I go back and watch them now, I'm like, okay, yeah, Grimith did actually explain it. I just don't, I was a bit too young to catch on and keep this information really, uh, like, you know, in, in my brain. But when I watched uh, the Mysterious JG play ROTK11 uh, on the uh, PlayStation 2, I believe he had it on, um, I was watching his campaign as Lu Bei and try to... Um, I was trying to watch... I was basically, I was watching his campaign as Lu Bei and him trying not to be destroyed by Cao Cao. And in this, like, obviously, he did a really good job again. Watching it for again, he did an amazing job of not positioning out anyone as a good or bad person. But, like, you know, he does a good job of, like, role-playing his character, you know, kind of showing off that Lu Bei is, you know, he's playing as Lu Bei, and, you know, you know, Lu Bei's got these good traits, and he's got these bad traits, but Sao Sao's a bit worse. Stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, go, coming from that, and then being a bit of a uh, uh, Wu Kingdom fanboy, um, you know, liking Sun Tzu and Sun Quan and Sun Jian, um, liking all of those, I was a little bit of a fanboy. Don't get me wrong. I love the Kingdom of Wu. It's red. It was always interesting. Sansa's really cool. You know, can't lose it. But as a grown-up and as I, like, you know, read the novels again and, you know, kind of, like, always ingratiated myself deeper and deeper and deeper into the lore, in my opinion, 
Sao Sao is the definable, lawful character in the books. I personally consider him the actual... I consider him a bit of a dick. Because don't get me wrong, Sao Sao's a bit of a dick. But I think he was the one character who really, really, really wanted to put China together. I think Lu Bei wanted to do it, put it together, because he was kind of put into the position of needing to. And kind of like had the supporters be like, well, you know, you're related to the Han. G g g you know, restore the Han. Because um, if we look at the, all the way through Cao Cao's Sao reign, no, at no point did Cao Cao depose the Emperor. Don't get me wrong, he did control the Emperor a little bit. And, you know, he definitely, he definitely had machinations of using the Emperor to extend his own goals which was, you know, the unification of China. And he was using, you know, the emperor. So don't get me wrong. I don't think Sao was a great guy. I think he was definitely doing, you know, selfish things and using the emperor's influence and power and the influence of power he gained from having the emperor at his court. He was definitely doing things that would be considered dickish. But he never deposed the emperor. And as far as I remember, he never had any plans of disposing of the emperor and, you know, usurping his seat for himself. Oh, fuck you. So I knew I'd get fucking fined for that as well. So, yeah, like, thinking about it in that regard, like, Sao Sao never, ever, ever had any attempts, as far as I remember. Again, again, as far as I remember, I could be wrong. Please do correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or on stream. Um, he never had any intentions of deposing the Emperor. Left. Because that didn't help him, you know? That was, you know, he, using the Emperor's authority made him seem righteous. And how he had the Emperor, like, he was the uh, protector of the Emperor. So why would he get rid of the emperor and then become the guy who got, you know, deposed the emperor? Doesn't make a lot of sense. But unfortunately, his son was an absolute dickhead and he uh, deposed the emperor and created the uh, Wei Dynasty. Which honestly was a massive fuck up for Sao Pi. Given Sao Pi was not the oldest son of Sao uh, Sao. Sao. I believe Sao Ang, who gave his father a horse and, you know, accepted his death earlier in the story. It's fucking raining, dude. How am I meant to stop? Um, but yeah, his son Sao Ang. But essentially, yeah, I think out of all the characters, especially Sun, uh, Sun Quan, who definitely did quite a few fucked up things as well and definitely was a bit of a dick. Uh, I think Sao Sao out of the three was the best option for unific unification of China. Like, he beat his old friend and mentor. I think, if I remember correctly, um, uh, Yuan Shao was his mentor. Um, mm. Or at the very least, a, a, an old friend. Um, he was definitely an old friend. I just can't remember if he was a mentor as well. Um, but either way, yeah, uh, I think Cao Cao, especially after defeating, like I said, Yuan Shao, and kind of, you know, uniting all of the North against um, the rest of the other two um, players, I think he really, like, not only had the best chance of, you know, being the, uh, being what China needed at the time, I, I feel, especially feel like if he hadn't died when he did and he was able to, you know, overcome the uh, the alliance the South had against him, both Wu and, Wu and Shu had uh, a uh, tenuous alliance over the years. Um, I would never say they had the most uh, successful of alliances. Um, but if Cao Cao hadn't died when he died and uh, was able to unite China before he died, which, don't get me wrong, was definitely going to be a hard press because he was an older man uh, at that time. But if he had, um, the really interesting thing, I think, in my opinion, would have been... Because um, if he hadn't died and South Pi hadn't taken over, Simi Yu... Uh, Simi Yu... Wait, is it Simi Yu? Shit, is it Simi Yu? One second. Sima Yu. Yeah, Simi Yu. If Sima Yu hadn't, um, yeah, it is Sima Yu. If Sima Yu hadn't taken over, is it Sima Yu? Wait, I'm getting, no, Sima Yi, I think it is. One second. Is it Sima Yi? I'm confused now. Is it Sima Yi I'm on about? Yeah, because Sima Yu's from the, the Eight Princes. I Sima Yi. That's the one. He would, yep, Simi Yi. Yeah, Simi Yi was obviously, you know, a very intelligent man, you know, um, the opposite of, uh, kind of like the direct opposite of, um, is it Simi Yi? I'm getting really confused now. 
Yeah, he was born in 179. It has to be Simi Yi. I don't know why I'm getting... So yeah, there he is. Yeah, it's Simi Yi. So Simi Yi, it was because of uh, Sal P took over. Simi Yi kind of dunked on him, I would say, and uh, deposed Sal P. Because Sal P's a dumbass. And because, obviously, um, Sal P... In my We've opinion, fucked up massively. Uh, essentially, essentially, if Sao Sao hadn't died, I don't think Simi Yi would have been able to depose him like he did Sao P. And I think, obviously, that's a really shit-paying job for how long that is. And it's fine. It'll get me two places. I don't care. But, uh, yeah. Um, fuck, it would be slightly to the left of me, wouldn't it? 